Well, Brian, I mean, <laughs> you know, there's so much I feel I, I could ask you about, but in a way, uh, it's probably best yeah. if you say what's in the front of your mind. Well, uh, I, I made a few notes as I thought yeah. about things. Um, yes. I, I first went uh, into Birmingham ringing in 1949. Oh, did you really? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, early 1949. It was soon after the cathedral bells were augmented. Oh, yes. By Gillett and Johnson uh, from 10 to 12. Yes. And, uh, of course, it was, it was a bit of a novelty about 12 bell ringing at St. Philip's in those days. Yes, yeah, sure. Um, and uh, that was how I started. And, of course, I met George and Henry. Yeah. And... Uh, I, of course, I'd learned uh, at Great Bar, where I lived at that time. Oh, yeah. You um, actually began from scratch at Yeah, that's Bar. right. Yeah, yeah. Who, who taught you that? A man called Alf Bateman. Yeah. Uh, he taught me to handle a bell, yeah. and I later taught him to ring changes. Oh, the right. were reversed. <laughs> uh, yeah. But that's a um, I always, one thing I remember about the second time I went up to the cathedral, uh, Henry, in his usual loud whisper, said, Hey, George, I want to teach that kid to handle a bell properly. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. And, uh, uh, and then, of course, I, I, my awful handling style was somewhat corrected. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, I always, um, handling-wise, I always modelled myself on Henry. Yeah. Because uh, I always regarded him as the best handler and striker I'd ever come across. Mm. I mean, method-wise, he wasn't very strong, but uh, certainly handling and striking. Yeah. He could ring a little bell or he could ring a big bell. He was the same. Uh, he, he was immaculate. In spite of his poor hearing, of course. Cause he yeah. was, uh, was he even poor at hearing even in yeah, his younger he, days? He was, well, I yes. didn't know that. He, uh. he almost lost the hearing in, in one ear. No. He put it down to uh, sitting in draft. You know, he always had a thing about Oh, yes! <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> hey, yeah. don't sit in a draft. <laughs> so, um, uh, oh, oh. It's rather a funny picture of him, um, That's good. you know, uh, taken by um, a guy called David Bates. I don't know if you know. Oh him. yes, yes, he was um, he was married to Francis Dobbs for a while, wasn't he? Yes, that's right. Yes, he, um, he, had, he, he was found dead under the motorway in Warsaw, wasn't he? Something like that. He was diabetic apparently, ah. and uh, you know, collapsed. Yeah. Yeah, he was a sad character actually. Yeah. 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 I know his brother very well, actually. Yeah, but yeah. Yeah. I've got some photographs upstairs. I'll show oh, them shortly. Yeah, uh, yeah. You, 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 I think you've talked to Peter Cook, haven't you? Well, I haven't yet, actually. No. I know, uh, but um, I think, was it through you that we found out where he lived? In Flowers Town. Um, and, yeah, and yeah. Um, it was Chris Kippin who was looking round for, That's right. uh, you know, survivors from, mm. um, yeah. from the college youth. Well, I gave Chris, because Chris lives out at um, Clebury Mortimer now. Yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah. Moved. Yeah. Um, and I gave him Peter Cook's telephone number, and yeah. he contacted Peter and went to see him. Yes, that's right. Now, I, I'd met Peter a couple of times and had lunch with him, yeah. uh, and uh, he lent me some photographs, which I'll show you. In oh, right. There's one very good picture from the Johnson dinner, which, uh -huh. of course, in those days was always held at the Imperial yeah, Hotel. I know, in, uh, I know, yeah. Which is now an office block, I think. Mm. It's not a in uh, Temple Street? In Temple Street. Yeah. How about halfway up on the right-hand yes, side? Yes, I do remember. Almost opposite the truck. Yeah. Um, which is a favourite pub of ours. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yes, uh, Peter, of course, is older than me. Peter's right. eight, 81. Okay. May I ask how old you are? Seventy-five. Oh, right. Mm. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, Did you know him well in the early days? Oh, yes. Days? He rang, he, I rang one or two peels with him early mm. on. Was he a Brummie? Uh, uh, yes, he was. Yeah. Birmingham man. And he worked for Barclays Bank. Oh, yeah. And he ended up, uh, before he retired, as branch manager in Kidderminster. Oh, yes. Uh, and um, he, uh, he, in fact, he rang in my very first peel of Cambridge. Yeah. Uh, at... Um, Henry. Oh yeah, I know. Yeah. And it was a Sunday afternoon, and there was no lighting in the tower, and it was in the winter, <laughs> and it was gradually getting darker and darker yeah, yeah. and darker. Yeah. And when we finished, it could, you could just about see one another around the tower. <laughs> yeah. Oh, how kind. Can I have sugar? No, I don't. That'll be lovely. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there are always stories about uh, light failing, aren't there, yeah. actually? Um, I've, um, which reminds me, I, I've got one or two stories about Bishop Riders. 
Uh, oh yes. I don't suppose you ever rang a bishop. No, no. I, I, it was demolished before I um, I um, came to Birmingham. Yeah. But uh, uh, in, I don't, did you see this book? No. Oh right. Well, I mean, I'd be happy to um, give you one, but. Um, uh, I just want to show you that uh, somewhere here, yeah, we well, not only uh, Derretend, did you ever ring at Derretend? No, no, no. Derretend was closed before I stopped. Yeah, me. but there's a, a nice picture of, um, oh, there's a smell, uh, I've got a good picture here somewhere, sorry, I'm just wondering where I'm going to find it now, of um, Bishop, um, Bishop Riders. Riders. Yeah. Just a minute, Bishop Riders, page 44. Oh, well, I, uh, there you are. Oh yes. Yeah. Oh yes. It's a tall slender tower. Hmm. Hmm. Well, of course, those bells went. Um, yes, to Harborn. To Harborn. They yeah. sat. They have sat anything like that. As uh, people say that, yes. Yeah. Mind you, outside, uh, at a distance at Harborn, they are terrific. I mean, mm. I think one can recognise they're uh, absolutely mm. terrific. Taste. But you see, the difference was. Yeah. This was a red brick tower, hard red mm. brick. Harborn is a soft. That's true. Terms, that's yeah. true. Well, uh, yes, yes, and I suppose what the flooring material is, whatever that is, you know, makes a difference mm. as well. Mm. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah. Yes. Well, you might be interested to look at that. Yeah. yeah. Oh. yeah. Mm. Are those for sale? Well, uh, yes, we um, produced it. Dave Ingram, do you know him? I know David, yes. Yeah. See him quite often, actually. Oh, do you? Yeah. Well, we, um, Louise and I go with the, what we call the Wednesday group. I, oh, yes. I call it the Geriatrics Guild. <laughs> we're all we're all retired. Yeah, sure. And uh, yeah. it's a, it's a little group of, of when, Wednesday uh, meet on the first Wednesday in the month. Yeah. Um, and uh, we we ring at one tower in the morning, pub lunch, another tower in the afternoon. Yes, yes. There are quite a few groups like that. Yes, there? there are. Yeah. yeah. And this is a group that uh, I I, um, I joined some time ago, and David, now he's retired, he's joined them as well. Oh, right. So, in fact, they were over this way last week. Uh, oh yeah. The, uh, we rang at Hanbury. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it's a nice way of meeting up, isn't it? Mm, yeah. yeah. Well, of course, I knew David's father as well. Oh right. Ran yeah. Several fields with Dick Ingram. Yeah. And yeah. David's brother Morris comes occasionally. Oh really? Mm. Ah, yeah. 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 No, not every month. No. Well, we don't go every month. No. Because we go all around the Midlands. Um, Dennis Clive and uh, Brian, Brian Downey arrange it. Oh yeah. Uh, and we go um, uh, different directions, which is only fair because people come from all different areas. No, and some come from Stafford and oh, that area, that, yeah. uh, and it's a long way for them to come down into Worcestershire. Yes. Yeah, uh, so equally, we 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 are not too keen to go up for yeah, North Staffordshire. Yes, yeah, particularly if it's a miserable old six or something. Uh, yes, I quite agree. <laughs> Of course, Hanbury are a very nice area. Oh, very glorious Hanbury are. Yes, uh, I forget what date they are. Uh, about 1928, I think. Oh, are they? But they, yeah. of course, they were rehung a few years ago. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, in fact, at one time, I used to go there on a Sunday morning mm. soon after we came here. Yeah. Uh, but I, I don't go anymore. Mm. Uh, the ringing fell off very badly. Um, the, yeah. the lack of application of there. It's not like Birmingham ring, you know. Well, <laughs> I'm very conscious of the uh, yeah, <laughs> diversity very, of uh, the They're very laid back around here. And, yeah, sure. And Martin Powell, who's in charge, didn't uh, didn't really uh, inspire anyone. He turned up three parts of cut on a Sunday morning. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. So uh, I'm afraid I, I, I drifted away. Yeah. Let me have a look at one or two notes. Um, I joined the St. Martin Sunday Band in... Uh, I think it was 1951. Oh, right. Albert Walker was in charge, uh, and he invited me to join the band. Uh, and he died in 1961. Yes, 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 well. Uh, there's a tablet up in St. Martin's Yes, Tower, indeed, I'm very familiar. <laughs> and uh, I have to tell you that I'm now the only one living on that pail. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> like I'm not surprised, I mean, but, uh, yes. The ten little Indians, you know. Yes, but, yeah. yes. So uh, how old were you in 61? 61, I was... 28. Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Uh, probably the youngest in the band. Well, I suppose so. Yeah. yeah surely. Um, yes. Yeah. The last one to die was Bill Critchley. Right. He died what, a couple of years ago. There was something in the ringing world about him. Hmm. Um, so he uh, 
Uh, he died, uh, say, about two years ago, and I'm the only one left now. Yeah. I wondered, uh, do, uh, we've had, uh, this is a copy of a photograph oh. that, um, you know, you probably recognize, uh, well, everybody there, maybe. Uh, but actually, if you look on the back, we've only written down those that I think Muriel could could identify. Uh, oh. So there are a few yeah. that it would be very nice to know. Five is Bill Critchley. Oh, let me see, please. One the, 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 the specs. Oh, that's Bill Critchley. Oh, yeah. how interesting. Yeah. Right. He was very, very short-sighted. Right. Take his specs off and he was virtually blind. Oh, right. And, um... So what was his kind of uh, background? Well, Have you been in Birmingham a long time? Yes, he, 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 he came from Baldmere. He worked oh, yeah. in Baldmere. Yeah. And he came into Birmingham. And he, he was a very good ringer, a good conductor. Oh, yeah. uh, he was a, a very sarcastic man. He was very, oh, was he? Yeah, very critical of him. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. Who were his best friends, I mean? Or? He, he, well, he, he was with Terry Hampton. Oh, yeah. They both came together from uh, Baldmere. Uh, and they rang together. Of course, Terry lives in Devon now. Yes. Um, I think he's he's older than me. Yes, I he must be getting on a Ter bit. Terry I do know must Terry. be must be getting on for eighty if he's not yes. eighty. Uh, um, he doesn't ring anymore. Doesn't he? No, no. no I must say I haven't uh, seen his name. No. Um, who? Um, Dennis Clive keeps in contact with him. They exchange Christmas cards. Let me have a look at the others. Number six. Two, three, four, five, six. Sort of yeah. I don't know six. Is um, uh, Edgar Shepherd one of those? I was just wondering. Ah. This is a very old photograph. Yes, I suppose it's a press photograph originally. George Small, Frank Small, yes. Anyway, I've got Critchley. Six, I don't know. Seven is Henry, our kid of George. Yes, well, yeah, yeah. Eight, Bert Norman, Frank Ames, yeah. Albert Walker, Tom Reeves, Jumping Fold. Yeah. Yes, yeah. So you're not sure of the other? No, uh, number six, I don't know. Uh, no. Oh well. I mean, possibly Peter. Um, Peter Cook, Cook may know. Him. Yeah. I mean, that's a good, <laughs> good question to ask, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Bill Froggart's not here. No, I don't know what the occasion was. It might. I mean, it must have been some special occasion, mustn't it? Yeah. Uh, I've looked through the Peel records, you know, and not identified that particular one. But um, you know, it, um, somebody may. Know. Oh, a recent. Uh, um, re-emergence into ringing in Birmingham. Peter Beresford, do you remember him? Yes. Yeah, and Peter. have you met him recently? Yes, yes. Yeah, right. um, we had, of course, we had Joan's funeral down here, you probably know, because Joan moved to, uh, to Worcester. Some years Joan years. Beresford, Joan. Joan, Joan yeah. yes. yes. Uh, her name was Summerhay. Yes, was oh, that's right. right. Yes. Um, well, Joan moved to Worcester about the same time as we moved here. Oh, right. Uh, which was in 2003. Yeah. Um, and, uh, she she ran, she joined the All Saints band, but she was very irregular because she didn't enjoy very good health. Yeah, so she had nice. great difficulty getting up the stairs. Yeah. She couldn't get up the stairs at the cathedral. No, much too far. Yes, uh, and um, she I rang one or two court appeals with her, uh, but then she was taken ill and she died la last year. Mm. Uh, and Peter um, used to come. To stay with her occasionally. Oh, I see. Yes, uh, yeah. And, yes. And, and he came to um, to her funeral, which was at the cathedral. Oh, was it? Yeah. Uh, and we, uh, I was talking to him at the wake afterwards, which we had in the chapter house. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then, uh, then of course, he moved house. He went. To, he lives in Sutton Coldfield. That's right. Yes. Yeah. I think he's got. Uh, and then he started ringing at Litchfield, uh, which was where he came from originally. Yes. Back to his roots, really. But I was talking to Clive Smith, um, not not Monday this week, Monday of last week, and Clive said that he'd fallen out of the Litchfield band, 
for some yes, reason. Yes, I right? don't know what that is, but uh, uh, but indeed he has been around with us, and I've rung a couple of peals with him recently. Okay. And apparently he rang his first handbell peal of seven triples with some of our gang just last week. Really? <laughs> ah. <laughs> so he's, he's staging a tremendous comeback. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, um, yeah. Uh, but. I, I don't know what well, the problem was at Lichfield. No, I don't. He, uh, he, he fell out with them, and, and, and Clive thought he was ringing in Sutton Caulfield. Well, I think he may. Yes, he he he, he, he lives. He there. may be. Yes, yes, yes. He comes down. Uh, um, well, uh, he seems to know Alan Burbage. I don't know if you know. Yes, Alan, yes, I know. Yes. Mm. 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 Yeah. Uh, Let me have a look at the list here. Uh, of course. You probably know Patton Smith was Lord Mayor of Birmingham. Of course. Yes. Yeah. And for two years he was Lord Mayor because, uh, as, as you know, when the Lord Mayor becomes deputy the, the, the second year. Yes. Uh, but what happened, the, the one who, I don't know who he was, but the man who was going to be Lord Mayor the year after Patton Smith dropped out. So Patton Smith remained oh, really? Lord Mayor for two years. Oh, really? Patton which Patton. meant that he used his influence and we had the... Uh, St. Martin's Guild AGM, two years running, in the council chamber. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, which was something, you know, to remember, well, possibly. Yes. Mm. Uh, and uh, I remember little Albert Walker, because Albert was only a little man, you know, he was very, very small, sitting in the Lord Mayor's chair, you know, in the, oh, right. and he, he, his head was only just above <laughs> the level of the, uh, <laughs> of the plinth of the, yeah. of the desk. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But that was... Um, uh, that, that was a memory of mine, of uh, yeah. going to the Lord <laughs> Mayor's Chamber for the St. Martin's Guild AGM. Is that about 1951 or 52? It was like certainly that, was in it? the early 50s, yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, yes. And I believe they had a, uh, they rang a handbell peal in the Lord Mayor's parlour. They, they did, yes. 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 yes, they did ring the handbell. I think that was Stedman Sinks. Yes. There was a very good handbell band in those days. Uh, they rang very good Stedman Sinks, Walker, Frank Smallwood. Uh, Frank Haynes, yes. uh, the two from Coventry, Frank Perrins and Frank Purdy. Oh, yes. Um, yeah. uh, Adam Smith rang a pair of handbells, had a very nice style. Yeah. George Fern rang handbells quite well, too. Mm. But uh, handbell ring seemed to die out, really. Yes, great yes. Shame. Well, it's staging a tremendous comeback at the moment. Well, I noticed yeah. that there's a lot of appeals of Stidman Triples being Very run. Much so, yeah. Um, yeah. Charlie Webb and Alan Burbage. Yes, rather. Yes. I, 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 keep, I look on Companifile quite often. Oh, right. Uh, yeah. Have a yeah. Look at it. But oh, yeah. We no, do no. have the ringing world. Uh, oh, yes. Louis, Louise has the ringing world, and um, each year she uh, has them bound. And she donates them to the cathedral, to the oh, cathedral's really? ringing library. Oh, yeah. Oh. She's a member of the cathedral band. Oh, I see. Um, we'll oh, see. I see. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yes, right. Um, of course, Henry and George's hero was Percy Lafley. Oh, yes. Yes. Uh, Lafley was, was God. Yeah. Um, I never met Lafflin. Oh, didn't you? No, no, I never met him. I think he was dead before I came on the scene. Yeah. And he is buried in Kings Norton Churchyard. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, if you want to uh, find his grave, yeah. have a word with Ray Aldington. Oh, right. Um, oh, right. Oh, well, that would be interesting. Yes, yeah. Percy, yeah. Laff Percy Oliver Lafflin. He was a Kings Norton ringer. And, of course, the, the two firms rang at Kings Norton in those days before they went into the city centre. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. And they had a very good band of Kings Norton. Mm. How long does your tape last? Uh, Forty-five minutes aside, you've got plenty. Yeah, I've, I've got loads of tape. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. still working. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, Tom Miller was another one they used to talk about. Yes. Yeah. Uh, who was a, a very good heavy bell ringer, apparently. Yeah. Uh, that was another man I never met, and of course the. Uh, the immortal James George. Yes, um, yes. I don't know whether you knew very much about James George. Well, he's very self-opinionated. Yes, apparently. not a particularly attractive character by no. all accounts. There was a, a very funny story about Jimmy George. Um, he, uh, towards the end of his life, he had to have part of one leg amputated. Mm. And uh, of course, in those days, they didn't have uh, orthopedic legs. It was just a wooden stump. Yeah. Well, Jimmy George 
having had this wooden stump and got used to uh, uh, walking around on it, wanted to ring a peel at Bishop Ryder's. Yeah. And the, the other ringers tried very hard to persuade him not to. Uh, you couldn't stand for the, the length of time. You know, you'd be virtually standing on one leg. Yeah. But Jimmy was very determined. So they hit upon a novel idea. They nailed his wooden leg to the floor. <laughs> <laughs> before they started <laughs> anyway, they started for this peel and all went well until Mr George missed his Sally um, and of course he couldn't move to um, <laughs> and yeah, they, yeah. I think they rang about an hour yeah, and yeah. Uh, anyway that was okay. that was the end and yeah. he, he yeah. never went for another peel uh, yeah. so, did, you, did you ever meet him? no I never yeah. met him but uh, he was uh, mm. He was a very self-opinionated man. Yes, yes, mm. yeah, yeah. But uh, there we are, one of the characters of the Bernie Um Another story I could tell you about Bishop Riders, a more recent one, in which I was involved. Uh, the church was declared redundant, you know, sometime in the 1950s. Yeah. Uh, but that didn't stop us going there to repeat. No, it. indeed. Uh, we, we kept going there. And then the Midlands Electricity, as they were then, uh, realised nobody was paying the electricity bill. Oh, really? So they cut it off. Well, that didn't stop us ringing. No. Uh, Liz Yardley, who, 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 who uh, lived in Pansworth, had got oh, a, a I think she's still around. Isn't yes, uh, yeah. she's Elizabeth Wood, and she lives um, um, in uh, somewhere in North Nottinghamshire, somewhere that way. You are. Oh, is that that fairly recent? Because I oh no, a long time. Oh, a long time ago. Oh, yeah. really? Oh, there's somebody called Yardley. Perhaps yeah. it's a relation. Oh, it's her sister who rooms oh. at Hansworth. Oh, right. Yeah. Oh, I see. Her sister never married. Oh, right. Uh, Jane, oh, I didn't I think. know. Yes, Jane, Jane Yardley, yeah. that's it. Uh, she rings at St Mary's Hansworth. She has a uh, sister called Liz. Elizabeth, yes. Yeah. Elizabeth, yeah. she was Elizabeth Yardley, hmm. and when she married, she made a man named Wood. Okay. Uh, and she had two or three children. Um, uh, the last I heard of her, she lived um, near Newark. Right. Uh, somewhere that way. Keen ringer? Oh, yes, very keen. Yeah. Well, the story I was going to tell you was that um, she, um, she said uh, that she got a hurricane lamp. Mm. And she could bring this along, and we could bring by the light of this hurricane lamp, you see. So arrangements were made to suspend it from the ceiling. Well, of course, the light was not as bright as an electric light. <laughs> so before we started for this peel, Henry, who got this obsession with light, and he couldn't yeah. hear very well if it was dark, yes. he turned the wick up, you see. Right. So off we went for this, for this peel. Well, in no time at all, having turned the wick up, this thing started to smoke. Well, you know what paraffin lamps are? Yes. And they produce black smuts. Yeah. Well, <laughs> these smuts go up in the air, and then they come down again, and they... They, they landed on us. Yeah. Well, George was furious with Henry. <laughs> shouting, what the hell do you want to do that for, Henry? We couldn't stop. Well, we rang the peel, and when we finished, we were all as black as newts. <laughs> we were covered in this, this black stuff. Oh, God. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, we, nobody went to the pub that night. We all went straight home and got yeah. in the bath and washed our hair. And <laughs> with our clothes that we were. Yeah, it was yeah. Uh, an interesting story. But then, of course, uh, uh, the church was demolished, mm. and uh, we were very lucky to save the bells. It was Paul Taylor who saved the bells. Oh, was it? Oh, yeah. I wondered about that. How, we, uh, you know. Nothing was done. George had tried to negotiate with the uh, archdeacon, who was then vicar of Har Harborn, Harvey Clark, mm. and he was very offhand about it. And uh, the builders were about to drop the bells down. Mm. Into the uh, into one of the rubble, yeah. and uh, Taylors went in and took them out. Oh right. Um, and took them to Loughborough. Yeah. And then when the 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 diocese decided what they wanted to do with them, they went to Harborn because Harborn bells were a miserable old day. Uh, yes, I gather. Oh, yeah. 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 And um, and they went. They did a useful useful job at Harborn. Yes, indeed. Yes. Although there was some opposition, wasn't there? Ooh. You know, from sort of conservation. Oh, yes. Uh, that Wilf Box, I know, was, uh, I remember meeting him. Do you remember him? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, I knew him as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, the other church, which I thought about 
on Monday, well, I go into Birmingham quite often on the train. Yeah. And uh, I nearly always go past Bishop Latimer's. Yes. Now, Such I, a lovely town. Did you have a ring? No, no, no. Well, <coughs> there was a brand new ring of bells put in there, mm. um, about 1200 weight, not quite F sharp, between F sharp and F. It was a quarter tone mm. flat. Mm. So um, they were put in, and we started to teach a band there. Yeah. And um, we rang, there were three peels rung in them. I oh, rang, only three? Yeah. I, I rang in two of them. I uh, didn't ring in the other one. Yeah. And then the tower was declared unsafe. I think there was a crack appeared in the tower. And the architect looked at it, or structural engineer or someone, um, and said, the tower's unsafe, you have to stop ringing. So eventually, of course, the bells were taken out and they went to Perry Bar. Yes, they are a nice eight, actually. They are yeah. a nice eight, yeah. yeah. A very modern tailor eight. Yeah. And, uh, so what were they like in uh, Bishop Latimer? Were they, were they good? Very good, yes. Yeah, but yeah. that's another red brick tower, you see. Yeah. And yeah. They, you, they, they were clear. Mm. Suited Henry wonderfully well. Yes. Yeah. Crisp and clear, you yes, say. Yes, yes. Crisp and clear. Did you believe uh, that that was the... Uh, uh, truth of the matter, because I'd heard that it was the vicar and uh, one or two locals who objected to the bells, which of course were new in the fifties, yeah. weren't they? Yeah. And that they thought of an excuse. They got somebody to say that the tower was unsafe, although in fact it was just that they didn't want them. Uh, uh, you haven't heard that story. No, I haven't heard that story. Uh, well, who knows? It, uh, it, it could be true. I mean, I know that it's been the same vicar, man called Bashford, That's for right. all those years yeah. until. You know, about uh, five years ago, possibly, I think he retired. Mm. So he'd been there a really long time, and he certainly wasn't going to do anything about it. Mm. I went to the dedication of the, of the bells. Uh, it was a big, very big service, and the church was packed. Oh, yeah, how remarkable! A big church. How remarkable! And yeah. we we rang before and, and during and after the service. Yes. Uh, about 1955 or something like that, was it? Oh no, it was after that. It was later, was it? Yeah, yeah, it was after I was married. Uh, 19. I was married in '58. All uh, oh, right. And uh, okay, uh, it was in the early '60s. Oh, was it? But we were still living at Great Bar then. Yeah. Uh, before we moved to Whitall, um, so it was in the early 1960s. Because we, uh, we used to go over on a Friday night. George used to come over from Harborn. Yes. Uh, and uh, from uh, Sarbourg Green. Yeah. Uh, uh, and we used to meet George there, and we were helping him to teach a band. Uh, but uh, how did George travel over that distance? Did he um, on his bike? Oh, he did bike. Oh it, yes. Did he? Did he yeah. really? George wouldn't. George wouldn't spend money where he, he didn't have to. George was a bit mean with money. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He, uh, no, he was. Oh, he used to go on his That's bike. That's astonishing, isn't it? I mean, it must yeah. have taken him a while to bike that distance. Yeah. But he was, you know. He, he, mm. I think George overtaxed himself for some years. Only sixty-seven when he died. Mm. Um, well, you know, these days that sounds young, but actually in those days, perhaps, yeah. you know, it's, uh, it's a normal age, in a way, mm. perhaps. Mm. Yeah, so... Um, yeah, but Henry was a, a, a 80 or so, wasn't he? Oh, yes, Henry was. But, of course, Henry had a stroke, hadn't he? He lost the use of one one. Oh, no, yes, once he'd had a stroke, he was really... Um, he lost interest. Pathetic. It was sad, yes. Yes, I mean, I he and saw Mark. him a lot at that time, yes. Mm -hmm. He and Marge went into a home, didn't That's they? That's right, just around the corner from where I live, actually. Is it? Yeah. Uh, but uh, he couldn't bear it, you know. No. <laughs> he obviously couldn't bear no, it. No, he, he yeah. was very unhappy there. Yeah. Uh, but of course, I mean, Henry would would, would go out every day and yes. wander around town yes. and meet people. Well, he had, a, he had a sort of rotor of towns to visit, didn't he? That's and right. I think it was in Walsall, yeah. uh, which was his regular sort of Tuesday uh, place um, where he had his throat. Mm. Yeah. And he uh, he used to go and meet Steve Barton and uh, and Briley Hill. There were of course, oh, one or two real right. ale pubs yeah. there which he liked. And he used to meet Steve and some of Steve's colleagues at lunchtime. Yeah. Uh, he yeah. used to go all the way over there on the bus because he never drove. No. He used to go all uh, all over there on the bus. Yeah. And he met um, Steve Barton. Let me have another look at my list. Uh, John Pinfold, he's on yes, that photograph. He's on the, photograph, he's, on the right. he's the one on the right hand end. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Uh, there he's quite a slim man, but older. When he was got older, he was a very big man. Oh. 
Now, John Pinfold worked as um, a bookbinder. Oh, did he? Mm. He worked for a firm in Birmingham all his working life. A very upright man. He never never smoked, he didn't drink. No. Uh, and he was uh, a very upright man, he didn't gamble or anything. Uh, there was one occasion when he was described in the ringing world, as I say, he was a bookbinder, yeah. as that well-known Birmingham bookmaker. I was absolutely furious. Really? Absolutely livid. <laughs> Oh dear, you're a well-known Birmingham bookmaker. Oh dear, he was a very mild-mannered man, but my word, he was certainly tight about that. Very funny. He wrote a very strong letter to the winning world. I suppose George Chaplin would have known him, and did you know George's dad? I knew, I was going to ask you about George, because he was your predecessor as librarian, wasn't he? Yeah, we are right, yes, he yeah. is. Is he still alive? Yes, he is. He's very elderly. Yeah. He lives in a home in um, in Hansworth Wood. Oh, yeah. Uh, he's well set up there, actually, and, uh, you know, he's got, uh, um, you know, relatives uh, calling on him all the time and yeah. so on, so he's fine, yeah. Mm. No, no, he does keep in touch. He had a daughter, I think. Uh, uh, he, uh, yes, I don't know the extent of his, at least one daughter, and mm. he's got grandchildren. And his wife died fairly recently. Mm. Uh, now he's in this flat uh, in a home and he's fine actually yes, right. yes he does keep in touch ah. yes he um, as, as you say I knew his father his father was a member of the St Martin Sunday man yes always rang the tent on a Sunday morning oh <laughs> really yeah and his name was George too yes uh, and we always called it the present George young George right but he was now young George was never much of a ringer wasn't oh he? no no yeah. he was a very reluctant ringer yeah. he always came down on a Sunday morning and, and, and he'd sit in the corner and he'd chat and and then he'd get on the bus and go home. He wouldn't even come and have a cup of coffee. Uh, and he, it was strange really because he was always there on time. Uh, any occasion, like during holiday period when we were short, he would ring. But uh, as you say, he was not much of a ringer. He was a very, very poor ringer. He could ring the treble to Brent's of Yeah. Uh, yeah. Passably well. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, about it. that yeah. was about all. Um, his father rang Stephen the Sings quite well. Yeah. Um, but um, the, they, there was a little group of, in the St. Martin Sunday band in those days known as the Baldies. There was George and Henry, <laughs> Bill Froggart, George Chaplin, Ted Lloyd, uh, Arthur Jones. That was six. They were all the Baldies <laughs> coats. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Ralph Edwards used to call them the Baldies. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were all, uh, you know, I mean, I'd like I'd like to hear you say more about, um, you know, Sunday ringing at St. Martin's and so on, if you can think yes. of things. I did bring the, um, the register, actually, which isn't, uh, unfortunately, complete in... Um, oh. In... Uh, in the 50s, it's, uh, it, it, it wasn't completed, but the, this, in fact, starts in uh, 1927, then there's a gap, and then it starts again in 59 or so. And, of course, your name is among those. Yeah. It finishes in 1940 and starts again. You might be interested. That was the work put when the band came. Yes, yes. Walker, Padden Smith, Tom Reeves. Now, Tom Reeves was the old secretary before George. You yeah. know there were four secretaries yeah. in the century, yeah. each doing 25 years. Yeah. It was probably unique. Yes, Ernie absolutely. Ransel, Morris J. Morris, he was Welsh. Oh, was he? Very Welsh. Oh, indeed, a good <laughs> Bert Norman, very, very rather self-opinionated man. Bill Froggart, ran the tenor behind. Yeah, um, I never met him, actually, but no. uh, people talk about him quite a lot. Yeah. Uh, Bill Dowding, of course, uh, who was a policeman. Uh-huh. Uh, he, rather funny, Bill Dowding. He, uh, a very raw bone Worcestershire man. Yeah. Uh, he worked. He was the village constable at Martley. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, and then uh, he he discovered that if he were transferred to Birmingham, he got an extra ten shillings a week. The uh, Birmingham policemen were better paid than Worcestershire policemen, so he moved to Birmingham, and he joined the St Martin Sunday Band, and he also joined the choir at St Martin. Oh really? Anyway, uh, when Brian Green came as rector. He decided he wanted to uh, improve the standard of music, and he got someone in. I think it was Huskisson Stubbington from Tewkesbury Abbey, 
uh, to do voice tests with all of them. Oh dear! Poor old Bill failed. Oh dear! Oh, How God. awful! Oh dear! Oh, what a tragedy! Well, he, uh, that was that was the end. He he, not, he resigned from the choir. He resigned from the Sunday band, and he went to ring at Edgbaston. And he, in fact, I think he was in charge at Edgbaston for a while. And, oh, uh, what a sad story! Yeah. 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 Sid Holloway, of course, was a pharmacist. Uh, yeah. Had his own business in Smedley High Street. Um, Sid died of cancer, unfortunately. Ernie Alloway, I remember him. Stan Mason, of course, yeah. also a former um, Master of the College Union. Yes, well. um, Henry and George. Jay Jagger, I don't know him. John Jagger, he must be a word. Uh, um, he's a name from really the past, I think, isn't he? I think. I never met him. He might be very old in that. So, that George point. Chaplin, of course. He's, he's got Chaplin here. What mm -hmm. absence is not he? Well, it's wartime, isn't it? Bert Spencer, Frank Haynes, Maurice Hibbert. I didn't know Maurice, but I knew most of them. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know Jack Jagger then. Uh, what's the uh, film we did? Oh, here we are. 1961. I suppose it was a natural uh, succession, was it, for George to take over from Albert? But what happened? Oh, there was a bit of a <laughs> she muscle. When Albert died, both George and Frank Hayes wanted to be in charge. Oh, right. Uh -huh. And there was a, a little bit of a, a battle yeah, oh, right. between them. Yeah. Uh, we all stood to one side and watched the same shape. <laughs> and there was, anyway, uh, to cut a long story short, uh, they agreed on a, a split of responsibility. Frank Haynes would be the conductor and George would be the town warden. Right. He maintained the bells, uh, and he was responsible for the money and that sort of thing. Okay. Uh, and, and this thing, of course. I mean, this is George's handwriting. Yeah, it's rather. Um, this was after John Anderson. Well, oh, Percy Richards, of course. Jimmy Turner. Now, John Pinfold and Jimmy Turner, they were only half members. They rang at Selly Oak. They were um, uh, part of Mr. Cartwright's band. Uh, Jim worked as a gardener for Cadbury's. Uh, yes, I remember him. Yeah, yeah. Mm, but an aw aw awkward style of hanging the bell. Um, Percy Richards, of course, was a disaster. But, uh, what did he do for him? T tell me more about him. You know, or Percy, the Percy Richards. Well, at one time, the the band was slipping badly, and Richards, who came from Stourbridge. Uh, whose son was Charlie Richards, and, uh, who was a better ringer than his father, came on a Sunday morning, and Albert Walker, much to the disgust of most of the members of the band, invited him to join the uh, band. Oh, yeah. Well, having got him in the band, we couldn't get rid of him. Uh, yeah. And he was ringing every Sunday morning. And he always rang the treble, and he, he well, always went wrong. Yeah. And people weren't saying, excuse me. Yeah. Oh, can you hear the floor bell? Okay. Um, mm. And members of the band used to turn up late to avoid the Richards touch. <laughs> yes, I've heard that story. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And it got, it got, mm. it got worse. Mm. And then, of course, there was a bit of a schmuzzle, and there was a suggestion we ought to call a special meeting of the band. Uh, but the, the situation was resolved, unfortunately. Percy Richards died very suddenly. Yeah. And uh, mm. so there was no... Uh, no, right. There was no need, but that's, that was the man, Percy Richards. And did George sort of gradually take over command, or...? Well, George, you see, when Frank Haynes retired from teaching, because he was a teacher at Holly Lodge Grammar School in Smethwick. Oh, really? Yeah. He taught um, French and Latin, I think. Mm. Um, he, uh, he, he went back to Cambridge. Because he came from Cambridge. Oh, to retire. Yeah, to yes. retire. Yes, I remember meeting Frank as a yeah. very old man. Yeah. Mm. He went back to Cambridge. And George took over. Oh, I see. And then, when George died in 1974, I took over. Yeah. And I was in charge of them for six years until 1980. Right. Uh, when I was headhunted by a company, uh, and I was spending a lot of time abroad, so oh, I, I had to give up ringing. What work were you doing? I, I was in uh, industrial electronics. Oh. Uh, I worked for the Electronics Corporation of America. Uh huh. And uh, the um, Uh, um, yes, 
So I, I, I took the decision to give up ringing altogether. Mm. And uh, yeah. um, uh, you, you know, you can't work abroad. No, and stay and ringing. Ring. No, so I, I did. And I didn't ring for 20 years. No. Uh, it was after Maureen died in yeah. 1998. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I, I was in, invited to go with this this little Wednesday band. You see. Oh, I see. And I said, well, I'm very reluctant to come along because I don't know if I can still handle a bell. Really <laughs> like a well, it's like bicycling. You probably right. don't forget. That's actually. right. Yeah. Anyway, I went along, and um, that was when I met Louise. Oh, I see. And, oh, I uh, see. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we. Um, uh, I didn't bring first time I went, I just chatted to people I haven't oh, seen I for see. years, oh, and I the see. next month we went, I always I remember, we went, the first town was Holy Trinity Stratford. Yeah, lovely. And, um, lovely town. Yeah, yeah. and uh, we, uh, I I was persuaded to ring, the first thing I rang was a touch of Stedman Caters, I had no trouble at all, except for one thing, the, the muscles in my forearm ate like hell, oh, oh yeah. dreadful, oh. <laughs> and it, it took me several times, several weeks oh, ringing really? before uh, I got yeah. the swing back. Oh, I see. Mm. Yeah. Um, Did you miss it? Well, no, because I, 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 I had a very demanding job. Yeah. Uh, I retired in, when was it, 92, 92 to 94. Uh, then, uh, as I say, uh, Maureen died suddenly in 1998. Mm. Mm. Um, and. Uh, it was Ray Aldington, first of all, who said, why don't you start ringing again? And oh, I, I said, see. I don't know whether I could. Oh, well, right. I mean, I'm 66 then. Yeah. And it's, it's a bit late in life to start ringing again. Anyway, oh, yeah. I see. Yeah. Then, I, then I went to the funeral of the man who taught me to handle the bell. And it was while I was there, a week afterwards, that I met Dennis Clive again. Oh, I've right. known Dennis for a number of years. And Dennis said, why don't you join our little group on the wing the first Wednesday in the month. Yeah. So I was, was persuaded to go along and I did. And then uh, that's um, one thing led to another and I started yeah. ringing again. Yeah. Yeah. Well then, uh, 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 of course, I, 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 I don't do a lot of ringing now. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, but um, I do do some. I, I go over to Kidderminster once a month for Court Appeal. Oh really? Yes, yeah. they're quite a nice 12. Aren't yes. They? Uh, I mean, I'm proof. A bit disappointed. Well, I <laughs> have a job not to be. Uh, <laughs> you think it's not, not quite? Yes, I've only been there once, actually. Yeah, they're not time. quite right. Not they're, quite right. Dave Struckett is in charge there now, and he's working hard on the bells because he's, he's an engineer. And, uh, oh, I remember that name. Didn't he used to come from London, way right, somewhere? Yes, Sir Hertfordshire, I think. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, uh, no, I, I know Chris Pickford very well. Yeah. But um, uh, I, I don't know. If, yeah. Well, Chris, been over there. Chris comes over. In fact, um, last month I, I called a quarter of Stedman Caters. Uh, Chris, Kip, uh, Chris uh, Kippin and Chris Pickford were both in it. Oh, right, yeah. yeah. Both, made it very strange, both named Chris, both former masters of yes. the and both married to a woman named Heather. Yes. Incredible, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Anyway, it's <laughs> digressing. Yeah. Yes, this just bring back a few memories. And, uh, Ralph Edwards, of course, came uh, to, to Birmingham. Uh, he, he was one of the Cheshire ringers. He came to Birmingham and, of course, he, he joined the Birmingham ringing and he was a member of the Cathedral and St. Martin's Bandits, as we all were. I mean, we were mo more or less all members of both bands yes. because there just weren't enough ringers to go round to ring two twelves on a Sunday morning and we'd, yeah. we'd ring at the cathedral and go down to St Martin's and we often rang at the uh, cathedral on a Sunday night every other Sunday, oh, did you? Yes, yeah. second and fourth Sunday. If there was a fifth Sunday we'd go to Bishop Riders right. um, or occasionally when I when I was in charge of the ball ring uh, I used to arrange court appeals on a Sunday night, 12 bell court appeals um, on the fifth Sunday. Yeah, I see. Yeah. It was a fifth Sunday. Yeah. And that, that was quite good. So you've got twelve people there, you know, you get the Did you go to St Chad's at all? Or oh yes. I rang my first peel at St Chad's. Uh, yes. We used to go to St Chad's 
Uh, when John McDonald was uh, alive in, in Charlotte, St. Chad's, we'd go to St. Chad's after the ball ring on a Sunday morning. Oh, yes, well, we still for do the that. 12 o'clock mass. Yes. And then we'd go into the, the pub up the road. Or the uh, gun makers. The gun makers, yeah. Well, in fact, uh, that still continues in a slightly different form because, um, uh, you know, they, the service at St. Chad's is now 11, so we ring after the service at 12. Oh, oh I see. So we have a coffee uh, after St. Martin's and then go over to St. Chad's somewhere. Yes. And Alan Burbage is in charge there. Yeah. And so we meet him and uh, bring from back, well, until we've had enough, about half an hour, you yeah. know. <laughs> I, I, I personally particularly think that Rod Pipes made a big contribution. Mm. Of course he's been there for some time, but uh, he was in charge recently for three years. Um, and somehow he brings a, a, a professionalism, as it were, to the yeah. standard. Uh, of course, there are many, many very able ringers, and now you find, yeah. for instance, last Sunday, there wasn't a single mistake. Mm. Straight through, four or five touches, mm. ten to eleven. On the sixteen? Uh, no. <laughs> we ran 16 uh, for one, I think, possibly two of the touches, yeah. but much more often uh, 12. Yeah. It's more fun, actually. I can't hear the 16. Yeah. I'm a bit deaf. Yeah. And, uh, you, you know, it's not quite clear enough. Somebody told me you can't hear the little bells. Not well. very well, no. no. It, it was, a, you know, it was an interesting idea. And I think, in fact, of course, it's been a highly stimulating from a sort of technical point of view yeah. to have the 16, but um, in terms of ringing enjoyment, I think most people are off to the 12. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and actually, the way it's arranged in the tower, it, 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 it works perfectly well, you know, and there's a business, it's always a lot of people up the tower on a Sunday mm. morning. Yeah. So, how long do you have to ring? Uh, it's recently been extended so that it's now 10 till 11. Uh, you've got a full hour. A full hour, yeah. 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 Because when I was uh, in charge, we only had three quarters of an hour. Yes, it's not much. It's, it's not enough. enough. And what we used to do, we used to ring two three quarter touches of seven sinks. Uh, and uh, if any visitors wanted to ring, uh, they got to be there for the first touch. Because yes. I insisted that it was the, the service touch was run by members of the band. Yes, that's generally the rule. Uh, yeah. Still, yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, just looking down some of the notes I've made. Here, yeah. Uh, yeah. The Henry Johnson dinner, mm. always at the Imperial yes. in in, uh, in Temple Street, and of course when I first started going, there was one toast or, ne or not not a toast. The chairman would always take wine with those who knew Henry Johnson. Yes, really, even when you went. Yes, yeah. there was one. The last man who knew Henry Johnson was a man called George Mitchison. Uh -huh. George T. Mitchison, and he was the last man to stand up sometime in the early 1950s. Really, how interesting. Uh, and of course, uh, that was uh, once he died, that, that uh, was dropped. Yeah. Uh, but Good Lord. thinking the other day, before when I was thinking what to say to you, I was thinking, well, there aren't many left now. Who knew those who knew Henry Johnson? No, no, that's uh, right. You know, no, it is, after all, a hundred years. Of yeah. No, there's probably Muriel, Terry Hampton, yeah. myself, yeah. and I don't know, I can't think of anyone else. Uh, who knew, who uh, knew somebody who somebody, knew Henry Johnson? Yes, who, who would you name? George yourself? Richardson. All right, and what? And can you tell me something about him? Not a lot. He wasn't a very... He wasn't a very competent ringer, but he was a very loyal ringer. Uh, he was um, a man who... Uh, he wasn't a member of the St. Martin's Sunday Band, but he was uh, he was a member of the Aston Band, which, of course, was where uh, Johnson rang. Yes. I mean, his grave is in, yes, in, sure. in Aston Churchyard. Uh, George Swan was another one. Mm. Uh, they they rang at Aston. They had quite a good band at Aston yes. in those days. Yes, yes. Alan Burbage and Don Finnemore, of course, learned to ring there. Yes, they? they did indeed, yes. Uh, and uh, Did you go down there at all? I did, yes. Uh, which reminds me of another thing. Uh, the, the St. Martin's Guild, in my early days, had four meetings a year, mm. every quarter. Yeah. The first Saturday in January, April, yeah, uh, July and October. The, fir the AGM was always at St. Martin's, yeah. uh, and uh, there was ringing at, in, in, at the church afterwards. 
um, the April meeting was always at Aston. No, <laughs> was it? Always. And, and the reason it was at Aston was because George, uh, because Albert Walker always proposed that we went to Aston and nobody dared oppose him. <laughs> Albert, because Albert liked going to Ring on 12, you see, he wanted a 12 bell tower. And every year, uh, <laughs> as Walker was the master, uh, place of next meeting, uh, well, we always go to Aston <laughs> in April. And, uh, and you know, before anybody could get. And so for years and years, until Walker died, we always went to Aston. <laughs> So it only left two meetings of the year when we could go elsewhere. Yeah, I see, yes, yeah. And uh, it was nice to go out into the sticks in the, in, in the summer, you know, you like sure. Tamworth in Arden or yeah. or Packwood or something like that. Yeah, sure. um, and uh, and that was. Uh, Did people get to those sort of places easily, though? I mean. Oh yes. Not we, so many people had cars. In no, the... we used to walk. Oh right. We uh, yeah, we'd walk. Um, I mean, I, I I remember ringing peals at places like Hanbury, um, when we, we got off the bus at Hanbury Turn on the A38 by the Crown, and we walked to Hanbury. Yeah, there, it's quite a way. Rang a peal, and walked back again, and got on the bus. Yeah. Uh, another place where I remember we walked was Claverley. Oh, yeah. We went on the bus from Wolverhampton, which was going out to Bridge North, Yeah. and we'd, we'd get off the bus on, on the main road, and walk about three or four miles up to Claverley, ring a peal, walk back and get on the bus back into Wolverhampton and then from Wolverhampton back to Birmingham it was either the bus or the train. Mm. I remember Henry Fern telling a funny story uh, of, um, uh, what's his name, Pygott, something like that. George Pygott. Yeah. Right. He, uh, I think he uh, met Henry when Henry was getting a, I think he was getting a bus to Bristol. For some reason they were going to Bristol for a weekend and for some reason, I don't I, I, I don't know why they weren't going on the train, or perhaps they were going on the bus part of the way. It, he met him uh, in the street at Selly Oak or something and said, where are you going? And Henry said, I'm going down to Bristol for the weekend. And George said he'd come. So he just joined them and went with them. Yeah. And then uh, coming back, uh, <coughs> Henry said to him, as you can imagine him saying, you know, should we just have a quick one before we go home? Mm. It's on the Sunday night uh, in some local pub in Selly Oak. And he said, well, no, he said, I'd better get home. I only popped out for a loaf of bread. No, yeah, yeah. Mobile phones. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, yes. Yeah, I yeah. told you about the the uh, conflict between George and Frank uh, when Albert. Yes, died. yes, I don't uh, know that. Yeah. I told you about Bishop Latimer's. Uh, the pubs we visited. Uh, oh yeah, I'll tell you two things about pubs. The pub we used to go to from St Martin's was um, called the. Uh, at one time we went into the. Um, the Tamworth Arms, which was in Moor Street, just beyond Moor Street Station. Yeah. Uh, and then we we went to a pub in the Bull Ring uh, called the the Red Lion. Mm. Uh, Is that actually where would that be? Would that be north of the church? Um, sort of in the triangle. Or no, it'd be be at the west end. Oh right. At the east end. Sorry, the east end. Down there. Op op opposite. Right. Because I mean the, the yeah. whole area has changed. Oh, of course. Enormously. Yes, of course. Yeah. Uh, and we went to this little pub. Uh, it was only a tiny pub. It was very much a drinking man's pub. And uh, we used to go in the smoke room. Uh, mild was sevenpence a half, mm. and bitter was sevenpence halfpenny. Yeah. And Henry always objected to buying bitter because it was a halfpenny a half more. We always drank halves in those days. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we always went in there. Now, from the cathedral, we always went to a little pub called the Clarendon which was right opposite, there's a pub there now, on the corner of uh, Temple Row and Temple Street, right on the corner. Uh, and of course, in those days, we always rang a peel on a Thursday night, I mean, this was a tradition. Yeah. Uh, Thursday night was peel night. And we, if we rang a peel of Maximus, we almost rang ten full courses. Which yes, it took eight a eight really eight. long time. Really long. We start at six o'clock. Very often Arthur Pearson was late, so we would start late. The pubs closed at 10 o'clock. Did they? Oh, yes. And there was no 10 minutes drinking up time. They closed days. at 10? They closed at 10. It wasn't until later on the opening time was extended to 10, I 13, didn't know 11. That. Yeah. Oh. Um, you can imagine what would happen. We'd start 
and it'd be a three and a half hour peel because it was the light of ten four quarters. Yeah. We'd finish about a quarter to ten. It's a mad There dash. weren't many rounds at the end of the peel. <laughs> and there was one mad scramble to get out of the, into the Clarendon. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And it was uh, it was touch and go. We you didn't get drunk. That was yeah. if you had two pints you did well. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but, uh, yeah. yeah, well, those were the good old days. <laughs> and, and then, of course, sometimes we went to the Trocadero just down the hill, which is still there. Yes, yes. Um, and then, uh, years later, we, we went to the Windsor. I don't know if the Where's, Windsor store there, is it? Where's that? That was in Neelis Alley. Oh, no, I don't think it is. No, probably not. It was a grotty pub, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Ringers always chose the worst pubs. Yeah. Uh, and then, towards the end of my ringing peers at uh, the cathedral, we used to get out to the old contemptibles. Yes. Which yeah. has been That's totally way. refurbished, hasn't mm. it? I, I saw a feature about it in the Birmingham yeah. Post. I haven't been in there for years, but I, no, I mean, I it looks like a nice place. I always look at it when I, I'm yeah. you know, to Snow Hill Station. Yeah. You, know, you, <laughs> you can right. see it as you yes, go. Yes, we ought to go sometime. Yeah, yes. we ought to go and uh, re snatch the tower as it goes. <laughs> um, yeah. Mm. But uh, of course, uh, later on, of course, uh, uh, closing time was later and later, and then Rod Pipe and Peter Border came and introduce the uh, the short appeals, the 5042. Oh, I see. Made so much difference for an yeah. even appeal. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, we rang one or two long lengths. Um, we did ring three peels of Maximus in a day once. Did you really? Yeah. Who was behind that? That was that was Rod, when he, he was uh, he was the inspiration behind that. Good Lord. And the same 12 people ringing all three, we all ring the same bell. With different towers? Or the the different same towers. Time. Aston, uh, nine o'clock for yeah. Strathclyde. Solihull, two o'clock for Bristol. Cathedral, six o'clock for London. Uh, the first time we went for it, we rang the first two peals, and we were all keyed up to ring the last one. And George wouldn't let us start, and he made the excuse of, "It's too late. We don't want any complaints." Well, it was only ten past six, and we'd started at ten past six. Uh, a few weeks later, George died. Uh, and I thought, and I said to one or two of the others, I reckon George had run out of steam. Yeah. And realised he couldn't make it. Yeah. And he, he, did, he didn't like to say so. Yes. Uh, That's a touching story. Yeah. Uh, yes, yes, I can well believe that. And yeah. uh, George... Um, In fact, I'm rather surprised that he, 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 he was, George himself wouldn't be left out of that kind of... No. He Man. always rang, he rang the ninth in those days because he, he was getting on a bit mm. and he found some of the methods a little bit difficult. Mm. Uh, yeah. He yeah. did struggle with Strathclyde and he struggled with Bristol. Yeah, and that must have been awkward for him yeah. because he wasn't a man to take orders from people. No, no. <laughs> uh, yeah. but, uh, he rang the ninth. I, I know I rang, I rang three elevenths that day. <laughs> Good Lord. I couldn't do it now. Yeah. So when you went for the three peels, that was after George's death. Yeah, we did it. We tried. We did it again, and we rang the three. Yes. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yes, it was. Uh, mm. it, was it was something you know I couldn't face now. I don't ring peels anymore. Yeah. Uh, I ring quarters. Mm. I call a few of them. So. Did you go around to other parts of the country with the, with the Brummies at all? Oh yes, yes. Where, where, can you remember some good places? Yes, I can remember. One, one of my, one of my memories is uh, when the bells were put in at St Nicholas, Liverpool. Up here, here. Oh, after the war? Yeah. Mm. We rang the second peal there. Right. Uh, and uh, it was, I was thrilled to bits because uh, Albert Walker arranged the peal. The Cheshire people rang the first peal, which was Cambridge Maximus. And then Albert got the bells for Steadman Sinks, and he invited me to go, and I, I, I was really thrilled. Yes. And as it so happened, uh, Aston Villa were away to Liverpool that day, and they ran a football special, the, the train from New Street, ten shillings return. What day? What year are we talking about? Fifty-three, I think it was. Um, and we we went on this football special, ten shillings return. We rang the peel while they, the match was played, <laughs> and we, we had time to go into the pub and have a, a pie and a pint before we went back to uh, 
to the station to catch the train, Lime Street, isn't it, Liverpool? Yeah, station. That's right, yeah. Uh, Lime Street station uh, to catch the train back, arrived back in Birmingham about oh, 11 o'clock at night. And uh, that was before the days of football hooligans. I mean, football fans would better behave in those days. Yeah, and it was the most enjoyable day out. We rang yeah, up the Oranga Stidman Sings. Yeah. Um, and of that band, Terry Hampton and I are the only two living. Yeah. 1953. So who else? Can you remember who else? Yes, I can. Remember. Bill Dowding, Frank Haynes, Albert Walker, Edgar Shepherd, uh, Sid Holloway, Iring the Sixth, Terry Hampton, Arthur Pearson, John Pinfold, Henry Fern, George Fern, right. Ralph Edwards. So it was a good band. Yeah, yeah. it was a standard a strong, band. He was a strong band. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, how nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, we went uh, we, we went to Liverpool Cathedral. Uh, we also went to Redcliffe and rang the Peel there. Um, we've rung Peels at Newport on the 12 there. We've rung Peel on the 12 at uh, St. Um, Stephen's at Bristol. Yes. Uh, Newport, come on. Um, we rang Peel at Bristol there. Um, and uh, we went out to places like Daventry, we ended up in London Royal at Daventry, Stourbridge, which was 10 there, yeah. uh, they're 12 now, of course, mm. uh, we ran in London Royal there. Um, Shrewsbury? Shrewsbury, you? yes, we ran in Cambridge Maximus there. Because yeah. uh, Cliff Barron came from? Yes, Cliff Barron yeah. came from Shrewsbury. Yeah. Uh, I think he's still alive. Yes, he's in very poor health, but he is still yeah. alive. Of course, he was a very heavy drinker, was Cliff. Yeah, he keeps uh, uh, taking his toll. Yeah, well, well, I suppose he's quite old. Isn't he? yeah, well, he's only a year older than me. <laughs> just be careful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I I had my annual MOT yesterday. All oh, right. And, uh, and <laughs> Good for another year. <laughs> and the nurse said to me, she said, I'm going to give you 10 out of 10. I said, well, thank you very much. That's very kind of you. Yeah, that's uh, right. So, well. Uh, oh, yeah. that's very good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, it's, um, we did, we used to go out a lot in those days, mm. I don't know whether they do now. Oh, people, yes, but I think, you know, the keen ones are all over the place, I don't care. Um, but, um, but in those days, quite a lot of people used to work on Saturdays. Or of course they did, yeah. They? yeah. So oh, yes. You managed yes. to avoid that. The well, five-day week hadn't been introduced, in, I mean, it was only you teachers and people like that who worked five days. Yeah, yeah. yeah, people very often worked on a Saturday morning. Yes. Sometimes ring up on a Saturday afternoon. But the fa talking about that, Frank Haynes, I told you he was a teacher at Holly Irish Grammar School, mm. and uh, he also was committed to games on a Saturday. Uh, and he would, <laughs> he would, um, uh, he'd have to be in charge of the boys. Uh, but of course, if it was rained off, he was available. And I always remember one occasion, George asked, asked Frank Haynes if he'd like to come and ring an appeal on the Saturday. And the, Frank's re reply was, I'll come if it's wet. Yes, <laughs> I, th I remember Henry Fern was fond of that story. Yeah. And George said, well, I'm bloody the hell use of that. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'll come <laughs> if it's wet. <laughs> Yes, yes. It's uh, funny, uh, and then Arthur Pearson used to be very keen. He used to come on a, a Thursday night on a Saturday, and of course he came from Wolverhampton. He worked for Chubbs, the the lock and safe people. Oh, right. And occasionally Mr. Pearson was uh, detained from a late meeting, and, and he missed the train. And he used to, the next time he came, he used to be full of all sorts of excuses. And I always remember one occasion. He said that. Uh, the, the driver forgot to stop the train at Snow Hill, and he went, I can't, I mean, nobody believed him, but he, he, the, the train didn't stop at Snow no. Hill, so he, he had to go right through to Leamington, that was the next stop, and he thought by the time he got back, it was too late. Yes, that's good, If we met one short, I mean, he always rang a peel of London Royal, mm -hmm. somebody would step down, usually Terry Hampton, yeah. uh, and we'd bring a peel of London Royal. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Peter Border and Rob Pike were very smart on those things. They'd always got lots of compositions at their fingertips and they could call appeal. You know. yeah. Yeah. And we were all keyed up. We, we knew all these methods. 
I mean, uh, I, I, I struggle to remember Bristol Maximus now. Uh, but, uh, well, of course, that's been quite a new, quite a new thing, I mean, really, in a yeah. way, hasn't it? Things like Ariel of Bristol and Seducy. Yeah, people now turn up and they ring all this stuff. But, yeah. yeah, but uh, I'm afraid that ringing down here is very different mm. from the standard of ringing the cathedral to form. Really is. Well. Don't believe what you read in the ringing world. <laughs> Mr. Regan's um, teaching centre is not the great success in its oh, it? uh, oh. it's down to be. No, I think Richard Grimmett's got the right idea with his, his teaching centre at St. Paul's. That's, seem to be very good. Well, I, it hasn't really come into proper, into full use. Uh, no. I mean, the, the bells are certainly available and manageable, yeah. which uh, you could never claim for Mr. Cathedral. <coughs> uh, but, um, but uh, you know, there's still, there's still, still um, uh, work to be done on setting up the room. You know, there's a room under the room. Have yes, you been to some schools? Yes, yes. Yeah. Mm. Well, you know, that, I mean, Richard's been very busy with all sorts of other things as well. So, you know, when he when he puts the time aside, you know, he makes good progress, but uh, he hasn't done anything about it recently. Mm. Well, he's got a big family, hasn't he? Now? Well, he has. <laughs> That's one of the things. Yeah. Um, yeah. He, uh, no, I, when I, I heard that you were doing this, uh, uh, this report or book or whatever you're going to do, um, I I emailed him oh. and I've got about three different email addresses oh. so I sent it to all three, I didn't know which one was which, oh, right. and I said to him that I, I, I don't know whether it's you or, or I heard it, it was Richard Jones who was doing yeah. the, the, this compiling this information, yeah. Um, yeah. so uh, he, he then obviously passed on the email to you. Yes. Yes, that's right. Um, and, uh, you know, in a, in a sort of, I mean, I don't want to, you know, say too much about what will come out because, uh, you know, I could imagine some of these, uh, you know, centenaries of guilds that you get in the comic, you know, yeah. pages and pages of stuff that you'd never read, would that's you? Right. You yeah. know, and I like that remark that uh, Ruth Hardy said of George saying, you know, who cares what they had for tea? Yeah. <laughs> you know, who cares, yeah. uh, you know, who was voted to to what position, position and that kind that's of right. thing. I don't think that's very interesting. But the human stories and the, the tales, mm. um, you know, are certainly uh, worth preserving. And we, uh, uh, I wish I'd been able to record more of Henry's uh, stories, you know. But, uh, yes. Well, he told a lot of stories about Tom Miller, some of which would, wouldn't be printable in the ringing world, yes, of course. Yes, yes. Uh, and Jimmy George. Yes, uh, yes. There was one interesting story about Jimmy George. Uh, uh, identifying his, um, his conceit. He, uh, he wrote a report one day, because he was secretary, uh, I don't think he was secretary of the St. Martin's Guild, or was he? Uh, I'm not sure. No, I anyway, doubt it, actually. he wrote a report yeah. uh, himself about a meeting, and somebody proposed a vote of thanks, and Mr. James George replied with a few well-chosen words. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yes, right, yes, yes, yes. Yes, he, he was not a modest man by any means, George. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I, don't, I never actually met him. I knew yeah. he died before I came on the scene. Mm. Um, what was Paddon Smith like? A bit pompous. Yes. Um, he was uh, a, a little bit superior because, you know, he was Lord Mayor. He was a director of Lucas's, you know, yeah. Joseph Lucas. Mm. Uh, and he, he had a, an office in Great Hampton Street. They had a yes, a, a I know. Yes, Great I Hampton know. Street. Yeah. And his office was there. And he lived in Hansworth Wood. Yeah. Uh, and he um, he was a little bit superior. He always rang the eleventh on a Sunday. Yeah. Nobody, so nobody else could dared ring. Yeah. Beautiful style of handling. Yes. Very Henry used to say that. Yes. Yeah. He had a lovely style of handling, and he was a good striker. Mm. But he always rang the eleventh. Yes. And, uh, yes. One doesn't like belfries where there's sort of two set of plan. No. One. You know, it's sort of constricting. Really. It is. It is. Yeah. 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 That's my bell. And, uh, yeah. Like, yeah, Mr. I don't Mr. Like, that. like Mr. Cartwright's book on the wall. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Let me go and get those photos. Oh yes, please. Upstairs. Yes. Ah. Oh, that's a terrific picture of George, my word, on his allotment. Yep. But you notice he's wearing his trilby. Yes. 
Yes, looks a really heavy machine. Oh, yeah. and there's his daughter. Yeah, that's Ruth. Yeah. She was a, a music teacher. Wasn't that's right, yes, she still does. Yes, yeah. she still does. Yes. Um, Yes, and that's, Alan, that's Alan Begworth. Right, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. He's looking considerably younger. He's uh, he's still ringing a lot around this way. It, oh, does he? Yeah. yeah. Where does he live then? Um, somewhere south of here. I'm not sure where. Mm. But he ring. They, they've got a Tuesday band. They ring regular peals. They come over to Hanbury some way back once a month. Oh, I see. And um, yeah. he rings with them. Oh. Now that's Johnson dinner. Right, no, the Imperials and the dining Imperial. room. Yes. Right, let me t show who oh, yes. who's who. Yes, please. I think that is Paul Taylor. Uh, that's Frank Haynes. Yes. That's Frank Haynes' daughter, Pam. Yes, is she a ringer? Uh, no. 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 Right. You George. Doris. Albert Walker. Oh, yes. Henry. Yes. Stan Mason. Yes. And his wife, Wynne. Yes. Ted Collins. Oh, really? And his wife. Oh, I see. Yeah. Jim Collins came from uh, Croydon, of course. Yeah. But he always came to the Johnson dinner. Did he? Did yeah. He? yeah. To, uh, Did he particularly know some sort of people like... Uh, well, he knew George, you know, very friendly with George. Right. Um, but he always came to the Johnson dinner, always brought his wife. Yeah. There, was, there were several, I mean, there was Jack Milhouse from Lincoln always came with and brought his yeah. sister. Yes. His oh, right. sister, yeah. uh, neither of whom were married. Yeah. And Henry couldn't stand his sister, and she used to really? latch on to Henry, and he used to, <laughs> <laughs> he used to do all he could to try and yeah. avoid her. Oh dear. And this picture here of the of a bell, yeah. Phillips, is it? Uh, uh, I, I, I think I, I, maybe Jack Phillips. Uh, this is at uh, the cathedral. You can tell by the brickwork. Yeah. yeah. But look, George is in a collar and tie and a trilby hat. Wearing a hat. <laughs> <coughs> yes, what do you think that's about? I've no idea what they're doing, I'm sure. I, it may be, it look, it, it's not a new bell, is it? It's not when they put the two trebles in. Oh, that's a question. I don't think it is. I mean, it, it looks very shiny inside, but that, that looks a bit uh, caked with... Oh, no, look, I can see the word Johnson there. Yeah, Gillett and so Johnson. It is, so oh, it is one of the... Yeah. Well, it, the, the, it's, they're, too they're big all big. it's one of the old, It's one of the larger bells, isn't yeah. it? They, they were all Gillett and Johnson. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh well, uh, but it looks like a, a posed shot for a, a newspaper. It could be. It? Yeah, it could very yeah. well be. Oh, I might have a look out. There's no date. On it. No. Well, I, I can't let you have those because they're Peter Cook's. He no. Them to me. Well, uh, if you were able to um, make copies of certain, in, I don't think we need the one of Ruth perhaps, but no. uh, the other three, if, uh, would you be able to take them perhaps to a photocopier? Yeah, I, or something? I, I can photocopy or, them here, I've got a photocopier. If you can get a, a mm. decent um, copy of them, I'd be, mm. you know, I mean I'll swap you that, <coughs> that sort of stuff for, for a copy of this book. <laughs> oh, <I see>. okay, <laughs> we'll that's, a, a, that's a fair deal. <laughs> we'll do a deal. <laughs> and oh. anything, have you got anything else, I mean, from your ringing past? Not really, not any... Uh, yeah, well, I, I've got some of George's books, I think I, I, oh, I you? told you that in the email. But when George died, uh, Doris gave them to me. She said, George wanted you to have oh, right. these books. Yes. Uh, and what I, are I've they? I've got some of George's books. I mean, uh, are they, um, uh, I mean, printed books? Oh, yes. Not, yeah, uh, yeah. not his own... Uh, no, no, nothing his own writing. No. Uh, are they sort of uh, his history of ringing or that sort of thing? Yeah, yes, uh, and methods and, uh, okay. you know, they're, they're yeah. uh, um, yeah. uh, what else? Uh, this is uh, Edgar Shepherd's uh, oh, yeah. haters. Yes, and yes, like yes, yes, yes. Uh, yes. Did you know Edgar? No, but uh, you have seen him. I, I, I'm, uh, I met his widow soon after he died because he gave all his books to the uh, guild and, yeah. you know, is, is, is in fact a substantial part of our collection, which mm. of course has grown gradually into a very large collection. I don't know if you've been at the ball ring recently. Too. No. You well, we've got a big, in the tower, do you? Well, we've got a, a bookcase since 1985, it's going back a bit, uh, we've had a bookcase all along the back wall of, uh, behind the, where the 11th used to be. Yeah. And um, almost half of it now is occupied by Ringing Worlds and Bell Muses, mm. you know, because they, they never seem to get thinner. And um, and then uh, the rest of it, well, the Peel books, of course, 
and then a lot of um, other books. And in fact, I brought just to show you, Brian, because you know I've been doing quite a lot of work on the, all the um, historic stuff. You may be familiar with that book. Oh. Oh yes, I think. Do I you know. remember it? Yeah. It yeah. used to be kept in the safe. That's right. We swapped the safe. Did you know Arthur Berry? Yeah. Well, <laughs> so but I should be called Bill now. Bill, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Well, he um, he helped us get these uh, large uh, carpentry jobs, these bookcases, up into the tower, mm. on, uh, and his payment was to have the safe. And he said, "But well, I've got nothing to keep in it." <laughs> ah. But uh, so he's got the safe. Oh, he's got the yeah, safe. Yeah, yeah. But oh. you know, we've got much better. Mm. Um, accommodation for all the, all the stuff. I mean, you've got a lot of stuff there now. Because we've got a big problem at the moment. I was going to ask you what you've done about the um, the library because the Worcestershire Association has got quite a quite a decent sized library and no way to keep it at the moment. Yes. Yeah, Martin Powell was the the librarian. Yes. A lot of it he kept at his office. Yeah. Because he was an estate agent in Bromsgrove. Oh really? He retired from that. His, his two brothers are still running the business. Which, uh, of course, you know uh, what's happening to estate agents Plums. at the moment, yeah. running down rapidly. Uh, some of it he keeps in his garage, which is not good. Yeah. It's not good. Yeah. Book, books are uh, hygroscopic and now they're going to attract moisture. Um, the, the, the plan is to house them in the tower at Evesham. Oh, right. Uh, there's, there's an undercroft under the ringing chamber. Oh, right. But the, uh, the Evesham PCC are dragging their feet and the Talking about insur insurance and all that sort oh, of thing. Well, Martin's retired as um, as uh, librarian, and uh, Jane Parker from from Pershaw has taken on the, the role as uh, um, as librarian. But poor girl can't do her job because she can't get at the books. That's hopeless, isn't it? It is. It's a hopeless situation. It sounds like Evesham would be such a good idea because, of course, it's a freestanding town. You know, you exactly. can have access under your own arrangements. So. But I think the PCC are, are dragging their feet. They're a little bit worried about insurance or what about if this well, or these what about things if aren't that. that. Yeah. yeah. So we've got that problem at the moment. Um, oh, how very disappointing. Yeah. yeah. Yes, this goes back. Yeah. The start is 1804. I'm just uh, completing a sort of an extra. I'm doing a sort of an extract of it. Of, I've, done, I've done an index of all the members that are recorded, and um, yeah. I'm just going through all the uh, all the other particulars, and then I'll, I'll, if you like, I'll send you a copy. Mm, okay, you know, I'll you. make a little uh, book of it. Yeah. I mean, just a, you know. I, mean, I don't know any of these names. Well, they are fa some of them are famous names. Oh, you know, first yeah. one. Yeah, Thurston, <coughs> and, Johnson, uh, I mentioned Cooper, Thurston, Johnson, Johnson, yeah, yeah. and um, yeah, no, the, no, it's uh, mm. uh, it's a it's a very precious thing. Well, I can now tell you, Brian, that uh, in the last um, six months we spent one hundred and seventy-five pounds on that book. Mm. Yeah, the funny thing is, you wouldn't be able to tell, would you? So what have you had done? To well, you? Uh, in fact, you see, the cover was. Um, Falling completely to apart, the, this certainly all this stuff here was about to come to pieces. I was very mm. worried about it, really. It was just dry and yeah. uh, flaking. Is it mm. leather? Yes, it is leather. Mm. But uh, we, I got the city book restorer, the person they use, mm. who actually works in uh, Derbyshire. Mm. Um, she uh, uh, took it on. She's done a number of other jobs for us as well, actually, uh, not as expensive as this one. But with this, she said she had to gradually, a very slow process, peel off the front, uh, off the back of the piece of leather, and insert a new piece between the two, oh, and, and, and put it back. And I mean, so it's a, it's a brilliant job actually. But you know, you, the thing is, you can't. <laughs> Yeah. It cost 175. Mm, yes. Well, it took. It was a lot of work. You see. Yes, yeah. I'm sure. So. And a very, a very highly skilled. A very job. highly skilled job. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. You must so, of that. so very yeah. proud of you know having been able to do that actually. Yeah. And, um, yeah. Um, and there are a number of other things like that. For instance, we've got this. I don't know if you'll remember because it must have been in the tower. I suppose that's the correspondence between John Hopkins and um, uh, Oliver in. Uh, down in London, um, who was constructing a history of ringing. You know, mm -hmm. he, um, so Hopkins kept a, a copy of all the letters he sent down about all sorts of elements of history in the 1840s. As yeah. well. And um, so this is in just a, 
you know, he, uh, he kept it bound together, yeah. but uh, it's not properly bound, and the, you know, and the edges are all flaking and so on. So fortunately, I got somebody to sponsor this, it's going to cost 300 quid this time, uh, to put that into uh, volumes which will completely protect the pages, yeah. you know, and everything. Yeah. And uh, so that's the next thing. I was going to ask you, what's, um, what's become of those beautiful illuminated field books? Well, oh, absolutely, you bet. <laughs> you know, don't chuck them away. <laughs> no, no, they are obviously a, a prized, yeah, prized thing. Really, but the, yeah. yes, but, uh, uh, yeah, and there are about, oh, I don't know, a dozen Peel books altogether, aren't there? Something like that. Well, what, how but do you recall now. the Peels now? Well, this is an interesting point, actually. And um, uh, it, <laughs> it's sort of, it's never quite resolved, but, uh, it, you know, kind of uh, time... Uh, it were, in its own way provides a solution I think the thing is when it came to not, Muriel used to supervise the Peel writing yes. for many years yeah. but unfortunately uh, well of course the um, the cost of doing it uh, uh, God, uh, would have gone through the roof yeah. and uh, it, it seemed that, that, that people weren't willing to pay beyond a certain amount uh, you know to, to yeah. do it and so Muriel unfortunately uh, um, rather lost contact with, with how it was being done and it became clear that by the 1990s the standard was really rotten actually no it? comparison with the it used to be a Mr. Trogan who did that oh really? Yeah. yes well, when George was secretary he, he had them yeah. done and where, where would he have been? in Birmingham? In was he? he was in Birmingham I no, have no idea exactly where oh. but he, Mr. Trogan he, he hand wrote them oh yes rather rather but well, I mean Today, I mean, you can do it on a computer. Well, exactly. You've got Better. so many fonts. So you, 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 you can do it really nicely. Yeah. So, yes, indeed. Well, now the thing was, um, well, you don't need to really request. Yes. Uh, Thursday was the cathedral. And very often we'd ring two on a Saturday. Really? Yeah, morning and afternoon. I mean, this wasn't always. We didn't always. So, how many it. did the guild, as a as a whole, have a year? Because now it's well, about a hundred. We, we we would ring well over a hundred a year. Mm. Yes, well, maybe you're right. Although there are some, you know, there are some maniacs, obviously, who ring yeah. appeals every, every day. If I, uh, I but mean, uh, looking in the ringing world, the St. Martin's Guild name doesn't appear as, as often as it is. No, that then. may be true. That may be yeah. true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but, uh, I mean, I think, um, yes, um, yes, times have probably changed a bit. Mm. Uh, and, uh, but the, the, the standard of ringing is a lot stronger in Birmingham now than it ever was, I think. I, I certainly think we're, we're on a bit of a crest of a wave. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, you win the 12 belt competition, competition every year. Yeah. yeah, that's astonishing, isn't it? I mean, I think it's obviously, it's not only the competence, but the um, uh, but the team dynamics, obviously, are uh, mm -hmm. important. And that there are a lot of people willing to take part, but, you know, they're not going to take umbrage if they don't take part, no. that kind of thing. I that's mean, very important. You, you compare the... the you, and there's competition to get in the band. Yes, that's now, important. Down yeah. here, uh, for a couple of years, I ran the band for the Tewkesbury Shield, the Tim Bell Company. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, well, for job to get Tim Yes, in the yes, yes. You know, oh, I'm not interested. Oh, I don't want, oh I'm doing something else that day. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yes. Yeah. Mm. I mean, mm. you've got to get competent ringers. I mean, I mean, the early 50s is the time that I, I, I mean, Birmingham city centre must have been very different then. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, and uh, I, I'm quite car. interested in, in, you know, what it was like. I'm interested that, you know, as you say, the pubs shut at 10. Yeah. And presumably opened at 6, did they? Yes, yeah, 6 o'clock, except on the Sunday when they opened at 7. Yes. Uh, and we would, uh, we, if we rang at the cathedral, of course the service was 6.30, yeah, we would hang all. around outside yeah. for half an hour. Yes, yes, I, I, I even remember that sort of thing. And of course on the Sunday morning, the service at St. Martin was 11 o'clock, mm. and the pubs opened at 12. So. And I remember once, we um, somebody wrote uh, a letter to the ringing world, saying, uh, you're looking for suggestions as to how we could uh, spend that awkward hour between <laughs> the end of ringing and the opening of the pub <laughs> and the only one who bit was Wilfred Morton uh -huh. and he wrote a very long letter and, uh, uh, about um, ringers should be attending the service and this and you know I mean it was written tongue-in-cheek of course and it was uh, it was so uh, 
it, it was it was lovely to, to get this this uh, uh, this reply from Wilfred. Yeah. We used to go to Lyons. Yeah. In New Street. Uh huh. Uh, do you know where the old Theatre Royal used to be? Um, the corner of Ethel Street. You know Ethel Street. Well, yes, I, yes, there's I a, know. Yes. There's a, a French restaurant there um, now. Yeah. Uh, right opposite there was Joe Lyons, and we always went upstairs. In the uh, there were two, two. They opened at about ten o'clock on the Sunday morning. So they were open when we finished ringing, uh, and we'd go upstairs and we'd have a coffee there. Mm. Surprising, uh, perhaps that. On Sundays in those days, when the shops wouldn't have been open, mm. that uh, that it would have been open. That's right. Who would have been around? Yeah. Well, uh, there were there were a lot of us. I mean, the, the people whose names you you see in that book. Um, I mean, there'd be uh, the two firms. There'd be George didn't stay because he always went to the allotment. Henry was, was always there. Frogert, Ernie Alloway would come down. Uh, Frank Haynes, Sid Holloway, mm. uh, myself. Mm. Uh, Terry Hampton never stayed. He, uh, he always went straight down. Bill Critchley, um, mm. to name but a few. Yeah, Very but I mean, and who else in the population would be around in the centre of town? Very few people, there weren't mm. they? You know, quite frankly, it was only worth them opening, I exactly. think, because it was a, a big room upstairs where we used to go. We used to always have the same table. It was a, a big, long table where we all sat round, you know, yeah. tied anybody else who sat there. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, we have a rather similar arrangement, actually, at the... You know, there's a uh, Starbucks a coffee shop just opposite the tower now. Is that uh, very nice because it's uh, you know it's, uh, it's glass all round, got a nice view of the church. And, yeah. You know, it's a comfortable place, and I mean the ringers occupy half the place. Yeah. On a Sunday, it's very pleasant actually. Yeah. It's, uh, just the job. Yeah. It's the ball ring is so different. Yes. Yeah. Uh, another talking about ball ring. Um, in the old days, the Midland Red buses used to stop outside. Yes. Yes, uh, indeed. And. Uh, Albert Walker was responsible for keeping the clock right. But it was a job I did when I was in charge yeah. there as well. Um, and uh, I remember once they had a complaint from the Midland Red because the clock was a minute slow. <laughs> and anyway, there was a rather sharp letter was sent back to the Midland Red saying if, if they were so dependent on the clock, would they be prepared to pay it something towards the maintenance of it? Never heard anymore. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. oh, I always, I don't know why, I'd imagine, or heard somebody say that, uh, in fact, Albert Walker did receive some remuneration from the Midland Red. You don't uh, think he did? No. Well, no. no. Uh, there was a. Perhaps there, there was, was a suggestion. Yeah. Yes, perhaps that was what the story was. Yeah, well, you, yeah. you may be right, but no. the, the story I know is that we, yeah. we never heard anymore. Yeah, right. I, uh, Albert Walker received some, some remuneration when the city council wrote to him about the art gallery clerk, Bells, uh, and he, I can't remember what it was about, but it was something to do with the chimes uh, on the art gallery clerk. Yeah. Uh, and uh, what, uh, and he, his expertise was sought, whatever it was, I don't know. Yeah. And, and he did receive some remuneration for that. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah. Because he, I uh, don't know where Albert Walker came from originally. Uh, Sir, Somerset. Was it? Yes, Bridge, uh, Bridgewater, I think it oh, was. Oh, really? But he yeah. came to Birmingham as a young man. Very young. He worked for BSA. Yeah. Was that his first job? As, I mean, no, no idea. But he, he, he did hold, hold an executive position there when he retired. Uh, but he lived in a very modest house in, uh, in Small Heath. And, mm -hmm. and they used to ring handbell bills there. Mm. Um, and uh, yes, he uh, and he lived there un until before he died. He went to live with his son, who lived in Hall Green. Yeah. Um, Fred. Uh, I knew Fred because Fred worked for the same firm as I did. At oh, time. really? Yes. Oh, yeah. And I used to have a chat with Fred. He was he was never a ringer, but he was interested in ringing, and uh, he often used to stop me um, at, at the office and say. How did things go on Saturday? You know, oh, really? And, and, yeah. You know, and, uh, you think he's still around? I don't know. He, he must be he's quite a bit older than me. Oh. He's well into his 80s now, if he's oh. still alive. So, Fred Walker. Fred I've never Walker. heard of it. Was that his only child, or did he have he was only he, he was his only son, yes. I, I don't think there was another child. I never heard him talk about another child. Mm. But, uh, 
Yes, I hope it were for PSA in Small Heath, the, the, in Armoury Road. Um, that was the gun factory. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you think he would have got there, I mean, was John Carter anything to do with that? I don't know what John Carter did for a living. Oh, he was a gunsmith. And he an was engineer. a gunsmith. He, he patented various uh, improvements to gun mechanisms. Did he? Yeah. Oh. Mm. And was a, and uh, incidentally was an expert shot as well. Was he? Used to win competitions at Bisley. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. What's become of the, the ringing machine? Um, it's in the Loughborough Bell Foundry Museum. Oh, is it? Uh, but they do fetch it out on occasion. It was in the Birmingham Museum. Wasn't yeah, it? until they closed that's it. That's right. Yes. And, uh, did, you, did you go to Loughborough then? Or yes, I believe no. so. Yes, no. but it's still owned by the Central.